Hello and good morning and welcome to this third edition of Exchange for Media's Streaming Media Summit. Uh, after two years of pandemic, we are back on ground with this initiative. And as many of you know, the Streaming Media Summit is part of a full day of events that also includes the Exchange for Media Play Awards, which start at 6 o'clock in the evening today. Uh, I have with me the country head of Amazon Prime Video today, Gaurav Gandhi, who has been in this hot seat for a good part of the last four or five years. And Gaurav is here today to talk to me about what's happening in the OTT space, in the OTT ecosystem in India, how it has grown in the last few years, especially during the pandemic, how the OTT in industry has changed the shape of the content business, and what's in store as far as Amazon Prime Video in India is concerned. So uh, with that, thank you, Gaurav, for joining us. Thank you, Naval. Always a pleasure talking to you. So Gaurav, let me uh, get straight into this and ask you, uh, tell us how has the streaming landscape evolved in India in the last five years uh, that Prime Video has been around? Yeah, I think it's been pretty interesting overall for the industry. Uh, there, there have been tailwinds in the industry for streaming for a long time. The fact that we have a young demographic, pop, you know, overall, who's akin to watching more VOD content. Uh, we are largely a single TV household market, which basically meant that the ubiquitous smartphone became the TV at home for everyone. Uh, cheapest data in the data in the world, uh, and then of course, fascinating you know story around content content that we've seen across languages. So with such a robust content industry and the enablers, uh, is no doubt that we will sort of you know get to the point we have gotten to as streaming in India, and we are just getting started as an industry. I think for us at Prime Video, it's been uh, you know great five years as well. Uh, you know our journey really has been about you know basically super serving our delightfully diverse audience base in India. Uh, the fact that, you know, India is diverse is known to everybody. But the fact is, we from day one, thinking about programming across, you know, 10 languages, how do we build a combination of original content and licensed content around that? We've been super serving with, obviously, our global originals, our local originals, our, you know, movies across 10 languages, and then with even localized products. For example, example Prime Video Mobile Edition, which is an India-specific uh, you know, launch that we did now, it rolled out globally, a marketplace model that we've taken out with channel partners to basically give more selection to our customers. All of these uh, have been enablers in the super serving. The interesting part which we see in Aval is that with all of that, the industry on subscription side has grown significantly. Prime Video today is watched in 99% of countries' pin codes. Yes. We have seen <clears throat> our content travel not just locally, but globally. Today, customers can enjoy that in over 200 countries and territories. Two very interesting things I must state here is that as the business has grown and our metrics have grown as well and we've done really well, the impact we've had on the overall creative economy, uh, we're very humbled and happy with that. First, we've actually played a role in expanding the linguistic palette of customers in the country. Today, 50% uh, of our customers are watching content in four languages. You know, if you talked about pandemic, in your introduction, and you talked about that, saying one big change that's happened really is the fact that customers have been far more open now to, to watching content beyond the native language. So with that, it expands the selection of content that the customers can watch, but also expands the reach for all uh, creators. The second big change is about the fact that this industry overall, and we have played a role in that as well, is about giving fresh and new talent an opportunity. And I think uh, today with you know 50% of talent of our originals till date, and going forward 70%, we're looking at is new talent behind the camera, in front of the camera. That's right. So, so I think these combinations, along with the fact that you know we've grown significantly, make us very happy about our performance in the last five years. And overall, how the industry is going. Uh, but like we said, Amazon, it's always day one. So getting started. Yeah, that's fantastic what you've managed to achieve in these five years. And, you know, we are all, uh, uh, we've all experienced firsthand the linguistic sort of expansion of uh, content viewership that has taken place, especially in the last two years. I, for one, uh, took on to watching a lot of Malayalam content on uh, Prime Video. We've seen how Telugu cinema has really gone mass yeah. and you know, mainline in India. And the reverse is also becoming true. You know, yesterday, uh, Akshay Kumar's movie, Prithviraj, was announced, where uh, they announced that they'll be releasing the movie in, movie in four languages. So it is really 
cross pollination and expansion of creative talent happening across India, uh, the uh, plate sort of becoming bigger, the canvas becoming wider uh, can only sort of board really well for the creative industry, the platforms and ultimately for the consumer. Let me uh, now come to you know what Prime Prime Video is up to in India. Tell us what is Prime uh, 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 Video's vision for India and where does India uh, specifically fit into the larger scheme of things for the company globally? Yeah, I think Prime Video's vision in India and around the world is to be the most loved entertainment hub for customers. And when I say entertainment hub, it means that we will obviously program uh, and acquire and create lots of originals and movies and licensed films and shows for uh, you know our customers or prime members but we also look at how we can add to that selection by yeah. building the entertainment marketplace so as we brought into the channels program that we launched last year and having many of our partners come on board to offer their content through our channels program we have recently launched our movie rental service um, you know which is part of our marketplace program again so between all of this, you know, between what we do for our prime members uh, and exclusive original programming, and then our marketplace program, we want to be the entertainment hub for customers. Uh, beyond that, we also want to be the home for talent. And we believe that, you know, giving new talent and established talent a voice and an opportunity to showcase what they have. And also the fact that we, we are, play a role of being an enabler in getting all that they produce and create to the customers uh, is a very important and responsible role that we feel ourselves, uh, you know, accountable for, uh, for both the ta to the talent and to the customers. I think in all of that, as I was mentioning in the previous question you asked, that we also play a role of, you know, enabling the creative economy. Uh, and we think that all of us in the streaming business, <clears throat> in the, uh, you know, we've all sort of contributed to it. In the foundational years of this industry, um, we have really played the role of giving unprecedented reach to content. Um, and so as Prime Video, when we look at this, we also look at the fact that how can we get that content that a creator is making right. to as many customers as possible. You know, so we, we take some of these things as our core responsibility. Um, and that's how we think about it. To your second part of your question about how, where India stacks, I think India is a very important market uh, and locale for Prime Video and for Amazon overall. Um, and we are deeply invested in creating, you know, great original content and offering a selection to our customers. The India business is doing well. Um, you know, we, we see the, uh, India as one of the highest proportions of customers who, Prime members who are, who are watching video every month. We also see uh, India as a market where, uh, you know, you know, People are joining Prime Video, Prime Program for Prime Video. We're seeing last year, um, you know, the most customers who actually joined and watched Prime Video coming from India. So we are overall very excited about our journey here. And like I said, it's getting started. Uh, content, as you sort of have mentioned, plays the, you know, most pivotal part in uh, the life of a sort of OTT platform. And you've just announced a slate of 40 new releases over the next two years across various languages. And yes. As I mentioned earlier, you've done significant sort of play in the content space, language space in the last few years, uh, Malayalam, Telugu, not just looking at Hindi and English, but, you know, expanding the other parts of the content yeah. pieces as well. Uh, how are you looking to build the ki kind of the language content slate for, you know, your library? And uh, the other part of the question is, are you also looking at uh, for example, non-Hindi language content traveling uh, traveling across borders. Yeah, I, I think you know when you're programming for a, a diverse country like India, you have to make sure that you are working, f you know, for every customer segment that you're trying to cater to. So when we program uh, for you know uh, for India, we think about, hey, we started the, our, our journey with ten languages, and we're saying like, how do we make sure? that the customer of a particular language gets the right choice of content for them. And we therefore look at, you know, do we have, uh, you know, local movies that we can get for the customer from that market? Then we say, we, how can we build an original program for it? But we then go beyond and say, can we make sure that we enhance the reach of content of one language to the other as well? 
And the interesting part I can share with you is, you know, the, uh, the local language films um, have seen enormous reach outside the home state. In fact, 50% of their viewing has come from outside the home state. Sure. You talked about, uh, you know, enjoying Tamil, Telugu cinema and Malayalam cinema. So when you look at a selection for, say, a customer, you know, who's, whose preferred language is Hindi, uh, there is the Hindi local language originals we'll create, we'll create, we'll acquire Hindi local language films, we will look at how other languages can be made available to that customer to access either through subtitles or dubs. We look at international content that can be made available through localization or otherwise available with subtitles again. <clears throat> and then we look at you know how that selection is is sort of suited yes. to your taste. Because this this business is about segmentation and about the fact that I want to create um, you know right content for the right cohort of customers. It's not that you know you can offer it's not about like like i keep saying it's not about a broadcast to a billion it's about unicast a billion unicasts right in that context what your taste is and what your mood is your preferences you know could change and could be different than mine and therefore your selection strategy for our originals has been like that we will create a bandish bandit and we'll also create a made in heaven that's right right so we'll create a you know a modern love and a family man and that width of content selection. Similarly, on the film side, you know, you will you will see the plethora of films that we, we you know we license and we or we are creating now. So all of that is to make sure the diverse taste of our customers in each language is catered to. And because of the geographical and linguistic barriers going away, the choice for customers has expanded. So now when you're creating a local language content or you're creating you, you talk about a, a slate. When we're creating a show like Sudal, we are thinking about, you know, how can that show be appealing to not just customers who like to watch Tamil content, but actually to customers across India and around the world. Uh, just the same way as we think about yes. when we create Family Man, like how can be available to and watch around the world. And internationally, particularly, we already see 20% of our customers who watch our Indian originals are from outside India. So I think that's really what's what's been keeping us busy and be excited about the opportunity of how this content can really cross all kinds of linguistic and geographical borders. Yeah, very interesting, you know, bits of angles in that answer, especially with regards to how sort of content has traversed borders. And, you know, uh, you have examples today where, uh, you know, brands always used to follow the strategy of hiring different brand ambassadors for different regions. And now you have, you know, many cases where uh, Southern movie star is now a national brand ambassador, uh, uh, a sort of, you know, a star who's predominantly worked in the, you know, Hindi belt in the North Indian market is also now showcased very well across the Southern markets where, you know, the primary language is different. You have cases like Samantha Prabhu, uh, a big star in the South who's done Family Man and, you know, has been part of a Hindi, predominantly Hindi series and, you know, uh, appeal to audiences in the Hindi belt. Let me come to the, you know, other part of the content piece, which is movies. And, you know, sure. we all know Prime Video primarily started uh, as a, you know, licensed movie service, and then it grew, grew significantly to uh, where it is. And, you know, offering direct to movie uh, premieres during pandemic grew. Tell us uh, the way uh, you look at now movies going forward, your acquisition, yeah. What kind of, you know, content are you looking to sort of invest in, acquire or sort of produce? Yeah, we live in a country which is which is blessed to have the most amazing creators. And, you know, the fact of the matter is we've, we create between all languages about 2000 films a year. We also live in a country which there are people are really love their movies and are crazy about films and about overall the experience of watching movies. Between this, there has been you know, the, the the gap of access. And that gap of access was the fact that just 9,000 screens for over a billion people uh, to watch films. And it makes up screen density at 8 per million compared to, say, 40 for China or 120, 128 for US and so on. That results in the fact that most folks can actually go and watch a film in theaters uh, or can't watch many films in theaters and movies you know, don't get adequate window and so on. 
and so our uh, journey on Prime Video has been about really how to try to be a cinema at home, a theater at home for customers to be able to watch these movies. We started with uh, early access film during four to eight weeks across languages. We then, uh, during the pandemic, realized that there was you know films available to release. And there were customers wanted to watch content, and we then played the role of actually getting these films to to customers. And it actually was, I think, a defining moment. But that that moment was defining for the industry at large, and not just for Prime Video, because what I did was it gave us it gave so much confidence to creators yes. um, that their films can reach um, even a bigger scale and and audience base that they could imagine. Um, and you know when you could you know watch. Uh, and films like Sher Shah, the films like, sorry, films like Sher Shah, films like Surai Potru, uh, Drishyam, Do, and many, many others have demonstrated that. Um, and, and what's amazing about that is that they've gone into not just the you know deepest parts of the country, uh, cross language bar barriers, but borders, but it actually have been big hits internationally. Yeah. Indian movies were never getting released in so many countries and territories around the world. Yeah. But you get to watch these movies in 200 countries and territories in the weeks of in the first couple of weeks of launch. Now that gave a lot of confidence to people, saying that there's no longer a world of OTT movies or streaming movies and world of theatrical movies. That's right. That world blended together beautifully. So we could give that reach and confidence, and we played a role in that part, and others played a role too. Uh, so that was a big moment. And as we go forward, uh, you know, our journey in investing behind you know these great films is about how can we get more such films and get out to customers. And we actually believe theaters and streaming coexist in that role. It's not either or, it's and. And in that and, there'll be films that go to theaters first and come to Prime Video. There'll be films that'll come directly to us. Uh, and just on the supply side as well, uh, you know, we have uh, we've looked at licensing films, we are now doing co-productions, we are getting into original movies now. Um, so, so it's really the fact that we want to make sure we get as much films and output as possible, and then we make sure we give customers choice there. And my last point on that films is that our latest movie rental service that we've launched is one more way for customers to access films. That's so right. it's really enabling at, at both ends. On demand side, you're giving customers choice how they want to take it, and supply side, investing behind the films in various models. That's how we're thinking about the, the film business. Yeah, interesting you say that uh, uh, because, you know, movies uh, really, uh, as opposed to four or five years back when OTTs really started growing in India and there was a tussle with producers and theater owners, I think all parties, especially the sort of production side of the business has realized that, you know, working together has significantly more benefits and it's not a sort of, you know, uh, uh, adversary not sort done. of uh, 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 stance one has to take and uh, movies being on OTT has significantly helped the movie business and uh, when the movie business gets sort of uh, benefited, the entire value chain including the theatrical business benefits from that. Absolutely. In, in fact, in fact, uh, two, two important <coughs> examples is the, the fact that so many films were available to be released but couldn't release, capital was blocked, That's right. people had invested years of you know, blood and sweat into creating those films, to get them to customers, to make sure people can enjoy it, to commercially add value to the chain allows producers and creators to make more films, which can then release on theatrical or streaming or That's both. Right. Similarly, as we go forward in co-productions, we are actively, we are absolutely enabling the fact that our partners can actually go make, uh, you know, make the films and release in theaters. So we actually believe it's a completely synchronous uh, business, which runs, you know, helping each other overall, uh, and it's not either or at all. And look at the rebound, you know, once. Uh, movies are back in theaters, people are sort of headed back uh, to watch it on the big screen and I think uh, I will not be wrong in saying that that OTTs have played a very big part in this rebound because you know they've kept the content sort of pipeline going, they've made sure that enough investment kept going into the uh, sort of movie business, they made sure that you know producers had incentive to make good quality content despite the fact that you know, earnings were very restricted from the box office, the sort of theatrical release. And now that, you know, we, the pandemic is behind us, theaters have reopened, we have seen significantly more footfalls 
you know one uh, small example is people tell me pvr share price just kept going up <laughs> irrespective of what's happening in the uh, you know broader economy uh, i give you another example of how this manifests of the role of ott if you look at uh, this year amongst the three big films theatrically pushpa rrr and kgf are films that have become national hits <clears throat> and they are originally from a local language and they have gone well beyond that language into uh, appeal to across the country um and i i feel otts and streaming services have a bare role in acceptance of movies across languages and have been enablers of course these movies are great content i'm just saying they absolutely played a role in changing customer habits and being more accepting of 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 watching content outside your native language preferred language so th- i think it's really helps it's symbiotic because these great films that come on streaming pushpa was a great example when when it came on streaming and became as big a hit for us as well uh, so so i think it really works well yeah i mean we all saw kgf1 because we were at home and it was available on ott having said that bahubali happened you know before yeah, the pandemic yeah. and it was a, a very big hit but yeah. the fact remains that so much exposure to you know non hindi language content happened because we were at home and that really you know uh, was the precursor for people going into theaters and watching you yeah. know the next sort of uh, uh, lot of that content uh, let me ask you a little about the marketplace model yeah. uh, gorav and uh, tell us a little more about what the uh, w- 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 what is the objective it is supposed to serve and what is yeah. the marketplace model about i think the uh, the marketplace model for us is solving for two things one it wants it is about giving our customers access to content that they would love beyond what we are able to create or able to offer them from the with the prime program and we do a lot we invest a lot in that but we also understand customers want to watch more shows and more movies yeah. so our we we want to give them more wider selection uh particularly with channels program like i mentioned to you uh so with all the channel partners we get them on board we also solve for the channel partners to say we are able to give them reach of you know a prime member program and able to make sure that they are have here's a customer base which is a paying customer base who loves their content it gives ubiquitous device coverage to all our partners easy payment options and therefore it and makes the life of our customers better and our partners better so it it's really bring those pieces together the on the our our movie rental program that we just launched it's solving for you know the the point i mentioned to you earlier of the fact that there is supply of content and there is demand for it but there always been a, a a challenge in terms of the infra around it how do you get there so we played like i said we played a role of getting the movies to to theaters to sorry to streaming after theaters here is one more way for customers to choose their film get early access to films uh you know after theatrical uh and and sometimes before they come on on the subscription services and or they give access to films uh way beyond subscription programs for example our movie rental service is available to even non prime members people who are not prime yet so the idea is about like how can we get great content to customers and give multiple choices and options for them to choose so it, it's really about that let me ask you a broader question now about what's happening in the you know larger industry uh where do you think the industry is headed over the next 5 years to you know the there is no sort of two ways about the future growth potential of the ott business but give us a slightly more nuanced view of you know uh how is this growth going to happen and what is this growth what are the trends that this growth will sort of you know create which will be long lasting i think um you know when people ask me about the industry and say you know tell me how's the five years been and you know where are we headed like i i say that we shouldn't write report cards of a business that's so nascent and so right. yeah you know uh, in its early stages it's generally the industry is off to a great start i think the all the sectoral trends that we see the tailwinds are only getting stronger for the for the industry um two or three key things from our point of view that we look at one that business models will continue to evolve and iterate uh, you know we see in india the award model the sward model the hybrid model now we we have a transactional model on top 
So we'll have all of those models working. To, uh, people are approaching video from different lenses. You have, you know, telecom companies having video plays. You have um, broadcasters having their own streaming play. You can have uh, DTH service saying, I want to have online. And of course, you have pro play, pure play streaming services. Irrespective of the, of the models, video is the center of it. And that and center of that really is the heart of this content business. So if you look at content tense, what you really see is what we talked about a little bit. The fact is the language barrier, if it exists, is not diminished already, will completely go away. That's if you right. look at next few years, you, you will just have limitless choice and you will just want to be like, hey, if I, I need to connect with content. So that that is disappearing and disappear more. With that, geographical borders itself are also of, of for content, boundaries for content, uh, you know, uh, move away because you we can also almost see we are on the cusp of, you know, a point where you can have a Indian Indian series hit, which is global, truly global. We're already seeing massive right. appeal for some of our shows and movies. Uh, so we are seeing that. Third is, you know, you talked briefly about brand ambassadors earlier about you will have a different brand ambassador. We are seeing truly national stars. You're seeing truly national creators who are able to create content for without thinking I'm actually from this language or this state. You're actually seeing that and you will see them being international as well. Um, so on the content side, and that is what we're seeing. We are also seeing the acceptance of uh, our customers to try different kinds of content. So we are, as you would have seen in our slate, we have docu series coming. We have uh, programming coming from across genres, and we are creating from horror to supernatural to all of that genres which were earlier not being done at all. Um, and because it's segmented. Because it's very focused to a customer segment and then can appeal beyond, you know, you can go and actually super serve with more of what you what what, what, the, what they love. So I think the experimentation across genres, uh, linguistic barriers going away, uh, truly national stars, Indian show become shows and movies becoming truly global and global hits, are a few trends that we see going. From a business economic model point of view, I think all the models will work through. It's not going to be that you know, a, a model A is going to win over model B. It will all coexist. Um, and 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 the last point I would say is that customers are. Over the last three or four years, we've seen a very encouraging trend, and we always knew this, but it's very encouraging. Indian customers pay for content. It's a misnormal. They don't pay for content. They are value conscious, but when they see great value, they pay for content. Right. They're paying for experiences. They pay for when you have distinguished, you know, differentiated offerings. So we actually see that uh, business really becoming uh, really big from a subscription point of view. The, uh, it, uh, and people ask, well, what that could get to? Well, the pay TV industry size is an example of paying Absolutely. customers, right? So that's really the, the, you know, three to five year view of how we see this. Uh, at a broader level, you know, in five years' time, there'll be as many people streaming video as they watch TV today. So, yeah. Fantastic. One last question. What are the challenges you think that could come in the way of the sort of business that it grows? What would be, as you uh, said at the start, it's still a nascent business. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we are past the sort of stage of having teething troubles. Yeah. But what are the some challenges that the OTT industry is likely uh, to see at, as it goes into the next decade? I think the one of the big ones was to have a constant supply of high quality content coming from from here because the demand for content is so much. Yes. So for example, when we started our journey on originals, the reality is India had not produced before that high quality cinematic value limited series. You know, we had, you know, daily soaps, we had others right, for content we made for TV, but we didn't have experience of creating this but we had amazing creators in india who made great films yeah. right so we didn't have a pure play premium pay tv model in the country which which enabled this right so that journey over the last five years working with creators you know who've made great shows for us and others as well and lear we learned with them and they learned with us has you know is now and now going to other languages that's been a journey 
and we are very happy with how it's turned out for our customers and and lots more to be done but you know the industry has to do that at scale and build and learn and do more and keep offering you know the the the, the funny thing on this is that you drop a season of a show and people binge overnight on next morning and saying where season 2 coming or where season 3 coming you have to keep you know upping the game so to say That's it creates right. a benchmark for for the next one so constant supply and how to turn that around and and with production facilities infra high quality that's one the second is that we should never forget that this is a very diverse country with very different taste and preferences and you're not just programming for language you're programming for the household that's right right so if you're really program for the household how can i program for for person a person b the house the children in the house and so on and it's not one content that's going to really appeal to them is different things appeal so do i have enough to appeal to the house and how do we bring that forward and i think the third one is is really about the enablers which are getting sorted but you have to as you go forward um you have to cater to local products and offerings and packs and solutions which allow customers to access this content so like for example uh with where as we offer our plans a monthly a quarterly annual we also offer the mobile option for customers who want to only access on a mobile and so on so you have to make sure that you create products and offerings for customers to be able to get to this content as you supply that i don't see these as challenges i see this as opportunities but i see us us and others focus on these in the next few years to really unlock the potential of of what we can get to and like i said it's still day one absolutely you know one successful piece of content creates you know multifold expectations and you know people just want more and more of that and as always been uh, said in this country movies and cricket are sort of two pillars that have bound this country together and dare i say uh, you know movies should sort of movies now called content and otts have played a very big part uh, in in sort of content being a becoming a very big unifier in this country especially in the last few years uh, as we have seen uh, non hindi movies doing really well in the hindi markets and vice versa so really it is the power of ott that has driven this change uh, that change and uh, you know uh, put it on the same sort of uh, level as cricket is in this country for many many years uh, thank you gaurav gandhi for joining us for sharing your thoughts with us i am sure those of you watching here today uh, will take back some valuable insights about what's happening in the ott space and uh, what's happening with amazon in india uh, with that it's a wrap from me and thank you so much for listening to this thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much gaurav